three. Hi everybody, uh, Mr. Feliciano here with the one and only Mrs. Astaire. We're gonna go ahead and go through the second half of the third degree form today, you guys. So make sure if you got something to write on and you maybe wanna pull that out just to take a couple of notes, or if you just wanna watch this and then go back through it and practice, be ready, have some room around you. Like I said, we're gonna work just on that second half today. Mrs. Astaire did a great seminar last week over the first half. So if you guys haven't seen that one, go back to it, go back and watch it. Uh, I might be saying, or we might be saying, a lot of the things that she already said last week, since both halves are re really similar. Just uh, make sure that you guys are watching, going through it with us, and yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. How many people do we have already made? You miss Peyton. Nice! Hi, Peyton. Hi, Peyton. She's I miss you. She's a champ. I miss you. Go text all your other third degree friends. Tell uh, them to get on here. Emma. Right, I know there's a couple. How can you tell Emma? Hmm? Peyton, you better tell Emma she needs to get in here. And anybody else that you know that's a third degree. Anyway, so let's Hello? go ahead and start, guys. <laughs> well, actually, before we go ahead and actually do some moves, I want to talk about the pattern that this form makes. It makes kind of like an eight shape, really angular, like it's two triangles put together. So right here, guys, for the second half, we're going to go straight this way. We're going to go at an angle till the like front middle so right here guys if you were at a tournament you would be right in front of that center judge and then we're going to work our way backwards until the middle so we're mirroring kind of the first half right here so let's go ahead and get started let's work on let's make it awesome i'm going to be doing the first yeah. about two lines and then mrs stair's going to work on that last one with you guys so we're right here first thing we got to make sure that we're in a good sparring stance if you guys have a line underneath your feet that would be great Remember, on your sparring stance, your front toes should be on that line, and your back heel should be on that line. That's, this is what a true sparring stance is here, you guys, with your toes towards a corner, both knees bent. Now, this move is nice and slow. It should take about five seconds. It's a double hammer fist strike thing that you're hitting somebody in the clavicle with. So you don't want to do this, right, because they're not squared off. They're turned to the side as well. You want to make it nice and slow, still making it nice and strong. Now, I was watching Mrs. Stairs last week. Like she said, there's two different ways to do it. Some people, like Mr. Stairs, starts it like this and does here. I like to do this. I think that looks a little bit better. But, yeah, just choose which one works best for you. If you got long arms, I think doing this one might be a little bit better because you get that whole circle. So just keep that in mind. So we're here. These first three moves, guys, of the second half are a really quick combination, but you need to make sure that you actually do all of them. I'm going to go through them slowly about two or three times, then I'm going to do it nice and fast for you to see the rhythm. So, first move, somebody's side kicking you right here on the side. You're blocking in a parallel stance right here, so your toes should be forwards, knees should be bent, reaction arm is up, and it's not here, you guys. My arm is not tilted like this. It's at a 90 degree angle. It's parallel to the floor right here, so I'm blocking one. Their foot is still here. I blocked it, now I need to pass it. So this hand opens up, I pass two. If you notice, it's not a big swing, it's one, two. And then I step back fist, three, in that good back stance. Now you need to watch out with this one. A lot of people, they go one, two, three, and they kind of just flick their arm out there. You gotta have that good starting position. So one more time. It's blocked straight down one, in that parallel stance, bring that hand across, pass, Two, now I'm in my closed stance. Bring your hand up back to your ear, step back into that back stance. Three. And again, guys, uh, that move is a lot like a kick. You have your chamber, your actual move, and your re-chamber. Make sure that you're not doing that or something like that. Always have control over those moves. So, nice and fast. It's one, two, three. Hand and foot timing on that last little back fist, too. Make sure you're not doing that doesn't look right. So we did that back fist. We're in a back stance. We're gonna move to a front rear stance. And guys, these front toes don't really need to go anywhere. They still keep pointing straight forward. So I do that back fist. I do a little skip. Be careful not to make that a really big jump. Some people, and you'll see it at tournaments, they look like horses going over a little, uh, or like a gazelle or some animal. They go, <laughs> they do this. Uh, uh, this is too much. Yeah, no, no. It's here. It's a little hop. One, two. Make sure that your back toes are forwards, front toes are forwards, both knees are bent. 
and then we do our compound nine block right here. And that's what it is, you guys. We're not doing this right here. We're not doing this right here. It's here, starting position. Make sure that that front hand is the one that's on top. You're coming across right here with your arms, and then you're blocking down low. Now, something really important about this block too, guys, is your joint alignment. What that means is you need to make sure that that arm is straight, your wrist is straight, that you're not doing this stuff, which I used to do really bad, or like something else weird. It's <laughs> here. Want to make sure that everything's nice and solid right there. So, we did one, two, three. We did that little skip. Front rear stance. Make sure this toe is, or these toes aren't this way. It's forwards. Left hand is on top. Concentration compound nine block right here in front. Now you guys know with your rear stances, your foot position is already set up for that front kick. So you're here. All you got to do is lift your hands up, pick up that knee front kick, and then I want you guys to hold that re chamber. A lot of the time, since this is a number one front kick, it takes a lot of core strength and a lot of hip flexor strength. You guys do this, and then you drop it because it's too much. Uh -uh. Tighten up these core muscles right here, you guys, and keep that knee up. So it's here, my front kick, keep it up. See, and even mine dips a little bit before I bring it back up. You want to try to keep it same spot the entire time. Here is where you get your starting position ready for your next move. So I don't want you guys to land, then do it, then get ready for it. You kick with your hands up. You bring them back to right here, then you land one, two. And that starting position, guys, also kind of depends on who you ask. You just need to make sure that this arm comes out and then across. Because that's, it's a circular rich hand in her form block. It's not that. So it can come out a little bit. Just make sure that you're not doing or exaggerating anything crazy. I did that senior master just gave me a look. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. That looks silly. So you did that front kick. You get your arms ready. Land in that front stance. One. And then as this hand comes back, you guys, that's when you shoot out that other one. Uh, I was going to say something. No. <laughs> don't change your stance or anything. Make sure to stay in that good front stance. And be careful not to do a two-handed technique here, you guys. I know I said as this one comes back, the other one goes forwards, but you're not doing this. Be careful with that. It's block one, two. Make sure that your fingers are natural. Don't be doing like this stuff. So we did front kick, block one, two. That should be about the rhythm too, you guys. If you think about it, you're fighting somebody with this form. You're not gonna block a punch. Wait a second, then do the move. It's gonna be one, two. It's gotta get in there. It's gotta get in there quick. Then without taking a big step, like that, which I think Mrs. Stair talked about that last week as well. Without doing this, to pick up that back knee, you pick up that back knee, jump front kick. Same thing, watch your re-chamber. Land, shoulder width apart, and then one, two. I can never do this part, just doing it. I always get the hands mixed up. But let's talk about that block really quick, you guys, before we actually go ahead and move on. Uh, that block, it's an inner forearm block right here. So that would be like an inner high-low block or something like that. And then this one is a rich hand block. Now I really like the rich hand blocks in these forms. These and these, because you can get a lot of snap with your moves. So don't ignore that, you guys. When you're doing that move, make sure right at the end you are going boom and snapping everything into place. But also make sure that your thumbs are in the right spot. Because with both of those moves, it's really easy to notice if you do this. Is Nolan watching? He is not. And also tell him to come on. I've seen him do that. So here, boom. Thumbs nice and tucked. So, here, let me go through it really quick to make sure that I got the right foot in front. No, that was right. Okay. So we're here. We're picking up that leg, you guys. We're not taking a step. We're not doing anything crazy. You can turn a little bit here to get ready for it, but make sure that you're not over-exaggerating. The big thing about this one, what? I found it. Found what? This one is an inner form high-low block and then rich hand high-low block. There you go. So just remember, guys, you got to turn those wrists on both of those every single time. Like Mrs. Stair said, 
this is the inner forearm high low block. This is the ridge hand high low block. So remember that, you guys. Also, watch your starting position. I forgot to say that about this one. It's not here. It's not here, and your block is not out here either. It should be right in front. Right there, in front of your shoulder. Not doing this stuff. Don't let your arms lose control, which I think was actually what I was going to say before. This form is all about control, you guys. All about control. That's why it's so hard. So you need to make sure that every time you do this form, you are trying your hardest to keep everything neat and clean and precise, you guys. Because the second you start doing all this stuff, it's going to look really, really bad. So make sure you guys keep it nice and tight, keep it nice and clean. So we're here. Like I said, turn your shoulders a little bit, pivot your feet a little bit, just don't exaggerate. Okay, one, land like you're about to spar somebody, right here in your fighting stance. Don't land like this. Goes back to the control thing. What I want you guys to think is you're crescent kicking, but then you got to think a little bit like an axe kick at the end, and you're bringing your foot down right where you want to land. So let me do it facing you. If I just do a regular old crescent kick, it's, it's kind of okay, but if I think more like an axe kick right there at the end, and I'm not saying bring it straight down, bring it across a little bit, I'm more in the fight, and I did a stronger kick. So think about it that way, guys. Really pull that foot across. So you did the first one. Second one, turn and look first. Kick, same thing. Bring it across really nice and fast, right where you want to put it. And I'm hand and foot timing land with that twin knife hand outer form blocking that good back stance. Now with this one, it's really easy to make sure that you're bending that back knee more than your front knee. Just be careful. Don't do this. And then like fall into that back stance. Have that good control. Make it look like you step there instead of falling into it. And I would talk a little bit about that block as well, you guys. When you're doing that block, a lot of the times what happens is bad joint alignment. Like I was talking about with this move. Either you guys are like this, like this, like this, it looks like a mess. Right in front of your shoulders, your arms need to be straight, they need to be parallel, and you guys don't turn sideways, keep them in front right here. But again, not here, not here, it's here. Again, have that good control. So we did that move. Land in that back stage block, have that good hand and foot timing. I'm aiming with my front hand. This next move is a spear hand strike, so it needs to start palm down. I reach, I do that little step right there. Again, it can be a little bit of a hop. Don't exaggerate it though, don't do this. <laughs> yeah, see, see the master's laughing if you can't hear, don't do that. It's here, move with a purpose. Here, make sure that that left shin is smushing your right calf and that you're sinking, guys. The more you sink, the better this move is gonna be, and the more you're gonna be able to twist your body this way. Just remember, right here what you just did, you grab somebody by the shirt, maybe by the hair, and you're stabbing your hand into their throat. It's not a nice move, don't make it nice. Oh yeah. Uh-uh, here, really jab it in there, twist your body, get that good rotation. So we're here. My weight right now is on my right leg, and that's where it needs to stay. Remember, here we're doing a backwards back stance. So I'm stepping back with my good starting position and reaction arm, keeping my weight on my right leg. One, you notice this leg right here, straight up and down. One, bringing my hand all the way back here. Two, my starting position right here, you guys don't, like, I guess you can kind of close your hand around your fist if you want to. I always open it so that you can tell that I'm pushing instead of like, grabbing it all weird, but you can really do either way. Just make sure that that arm goes with that hand and it goes in a straight line backwards. And the entire time, you are looking at your target, where you're striking and where you're about to kick. Now, so you grab your side, you turn. Don't make it a spin kick, like if you were sparring. What I mean by that is, don't do this. Then you're gonna lose control. You're not gonna be able to do the other two kicks. Make it a turn kick. So I'm here. I turn look first. Obviously, this is all going to go together. But then I pick up that knee. Hook kick, counter kick. Side kick. Keeping that knee up nice and high. Making sure that you have that rhythm of one, two, three. With a stick. Land in that sparring stance again. And do that block right there. And I just now realized I did this on the wrong side. Yeah.
Yes, sir. All the moves are the same, though, so it doesn't really matter that much. Just make sure, guys, that when you land on that reverse hook kick, round kick, side kick again, that you have control. So you do that side kick, re-chamber it, think about where you're going to put your foot down, and then slowly set it down. You want to set it down slowly, too, so that it matches this move right here. If you just, and then do this nice and slow, it doesn't really match. Um, so yeah, a lot of this form, you guys, a lot of any form that you ever do, if you're going to fix something, you really, really, really need to think. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can just do it without thinking, and it'll look good. But if you're not at that point yet, you need to think. Think about where your foot's going to land. Think about your starting position. Think even about how you're breathing. Because if you're not, or if you're breathing too much, it's going to get you tired, and it's going to get you tired. So make sure that you guys are aware of all that stuff. So, I'm going to put the right leg in front. Foot here. I just did this block, or the strike, excuse me. Here, I'm going to go ahead and do the last couple of moves in this section right here, you guys, and then Mrs. Stair is going to take you through to the end. Make sure that you're really watching with that part, though, because it's really, really technically tricky. So you're here. A lot of people with these crescent kicks and butterfly kicks like to put their knee in kind of a weird spot and then swing it. Don't do that, but don't show very good control. So you guys right here, you turn, look at your target with your right hand up by your reaction arm. You pick that foot up, kind of like you're about to side kick, but not really all the way sideways. Kind of here like in the first degree form. And this hand starts up nice and slow down. Now, my balance was not that good on that. Really, really try, guys, to keep that core tight and keep that good balance. So we're here, look, there. From right here, this should not be a swing, like I said. If you have to do that a little bit, you have to do it a little bit, that's fine. But don't droop your knee like this to then do it. <laughs> what I like to do is I like to switch this leg to kind of a front kick chamber and then do my kick from right there. So you're here, you do that kick. Landing that good little stance on that 45 degree angle, twin hammer fist. You want to make sure that your arms are in a straight line. Don't be doing this, don't be doing this. And right here, you guys, Chief Master Sister gave me a good trick. For these next two kicks, you got to point with that front hand. That's where you're kicking, that's where you need to look. Don't actually point, but when you're practicing, look right where the tip of your finger is. So right here, you're going to step with that back leg right on that line, keeping your eyes on that target. Spit the needle, land it in back. Now here, you can cheat, oh, voice crack. Cheat just a little bit. I'm not saying land like this. Land here. If you notice, this foot is a little bit behind the other one. Then turn look to do that side kick. If you can put it all together, great. If you need to turn like this, stop for a second, then do that kick. Just make sure you do it right. So we're here. Turn look. Side kick. Try to stick it. Try not to float it. Front leg lands in front. Double lateral form block. Again, in a good sparring stance, you guys. So, again, that whole line, you should be traveling from halfway through the ring on that side to the front, right in front of the center judge. So, that's, that's the 45 degree little line that we traveled on. We landed here in that good sparring stance. Now, Mrs. Stair is going to go ahead and take you through that last section. Pay attention. Do awesome. Go for me. If you're a right-legged kicker, this is probably going to be your favorite line because it's the last kick and this one you can really show it off, especially if you have long legs. Hey. Okay? So we're here. We're going to look right towards this y'all. Straight in front of you. Don't move this foot. Don't move this foot. So we're here. We look. One. Just like in the last seminar, again, hips wide. Not out here. None of y'all's hips are this wide. Okay? Have them here. Then we step back. Look. Again. Like I said last time, do not move that front foot. When you set it up, watch my front foot. Don't do this. That's bad. Don't do that. Front foot stays here. Boom. Again, if you're a right leg kicker, show it off. This is the last kick that you get to show off to the center judge and that foot judge. So you're here. Like I said, cheat a little bit. Hands come up. Fall and step. Reach in, okay? The, again, like I said, the best way to practice this is, one, stretch, 
Y'all better be stretching at home, okay? Stretch for this form, and then practice. Um, mm -hmm. Get somebody to hold their hand up, lift your foot up. That Make works too. So we're here, we pivot. One, two. Reach over. Step. Right hand up, left hand down. Circle. One, circle, two. Don't cut it short and have T Rex arms. Especially if you have the long arms, reach all the way block. Then from here, let's get on the start. Again, this is going to become the front foot. You jump, boom, but land it. Don't fall over. Sink, the, uh, sink your knees. Don't do any of this. Okay? So we're here again. We jump. Boom. There we go. One, two, circle, lock. Right hand, like I said, put the piece in the oven. Take it out. And here. Remember, don't have this. Mr. Stair likes to do this or this. Don't do that. Keep it tight. This one, really breathe. Okay, you're finished with the form. So we're gonna do that again. So we're here, look, one, two. Don't fall, pivot, three chamber, set. One, two, bring your knees up, don't fall over. Punch, punch, walk, here, slow, boom. If you are, whenever you test for your fourth degree, and you finish and you get here, you cannot do this. You have to stay there. Same that tournament. Stay here till that judge says bro. Then you can relax, okay? Cool. Now, guys, for the last couple of minutes, uh, we're going to give you some drills. And then uh, one of us, I don't really mind who, can come out and show you that entire second half. Okay, Mrs. Stair just pointed to me, so it's me. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna give you a drill, you guys, and Mrs. Stair's gonna give you a drill to help you out with this form. The biggest thing both of us can tell you, though, and I'm sure she agrees with me, is stretch! Stretch! Especially Nolan Bell. Yeah. Nolan! Yeah, I gave you a shout out before Nolan. Go, go back and watch it. Anyway, uh, stretch. Peyton. Because most of you guys are teenagers. I think all of you guys are teenagers. You need to stretch! <laughs> you guys are really, really tight. The biggest things I would say you guys need to stretch is maybe work on your splits, work on stretches for your hamstrings, and then do pigeon pose. Pigeon pose is amazing. It works all this stuff back here, so make sure that you guys are doing that. And hip flexors too, hip flexors too. So that's like your lunges, that type of thing. Your hamstring is just hanging here, touching your toes, sitting down, touching your toes, and then like I said, pigeon. Pigeon stretch, pigeon stretch, pigeon stretch. Um, so I'm gonna give you a drill really quick. The stairs gonna give you a drill really quick. Gonna do it again. Let's do it, okay. My drill, guys, requires some sort of table, bag, a kitchen counter, something that you guys can go ahead and hold on to. And you've done this a bunch of times in class before, but you guys, for this form, it is crucial. You need to make sure that you do it. If you don't have strength in this side of your leg right here, you're not gonna kick high and you're not gonna be able to hold it. So what I want you guys to do is just take those kicks out of your form, like that side kick, as long as you can. So that round kick, round kick especially, you get here, make sure that you do them correctly. So one, two, and then just see how long you can hold that leg at that same level. Do that about five or six times on each leg, and then do it again. Doing it once a day isn't gonna help you. You guys gotta do it in sets so that you really get that leg muscle really, really good. Same thing with that side kick. Do side kick stick. Slow side kick, and this one you don't really have to hold it in the form, but still it's important that you build up that leg muscle right here. So do that, guys, about five times, uh, five times each set over like two or three sets. So repeat that five, and then another five, and then another five. By the end, your leg's gonna be really, really nice and tired. But if you do that, guys, you're gonna get nice and strong. So make sure that you're doing that. Also stretch, Mrs. Terry. You got anything for him? Yeah. So mine's a, like a two-part. This is what I used to do all the time when I was a third degree, try, especially for those round kick, round kicks to hold it. So two parts. First part is you can get someone to do this or you can just do it yourself. Hold the chamber like a round kick or the side kick. Either one works. I'm gonna do the round kick. And what you can do is grab your knee and pull it up higher. That way you could stretch that inner muscle right here. If you have somebody at home, they can just lift your knee up. So again, here, if you want to do it by yourself, that's fine. Grab it and pull. 
Okay? Then you just do the same thing on the other side. Grab your knee, pull up. Okay? That's the first part. Second part, you can do this at home on your own or if you want to get somebody to like challenge you a little bit. So by yourself, just hold your leg out, side kick doesn't matter, here, and lift it up. And every time you lift it, get higher and higher and higher. If you want, get somebody at home to hide their hand flat like this. And then you bounce on it, and then you get higher and higher, okay? That will help build that muscle here, so when y'all do your slow kicks trying to hold it, you'll straighten that up. I, and the very last thing I'm going to say, guys, before I go ahead and do that whole second half for you, uh, find somebody that you know does a really good third degree form and watch them. You know, whether that be uh, Mr. Vorster when he does that third degree form, whether it be me, whether it be Chief, if you've ever seen him do his form, he has a really good form. Uh, whoever it is, you guys, find somebody, even somebody in your ring. If you have somebody that's a really good forms competitor, watch them, record them with their permission. Don't just record them. And maybe try to figure out something that they do really well, you guys. Um, personally, I, and this is going to sound kind of silly, but I like to watch like karate forms just for like the hand techniques and the snap and everything. If you ever look at the really, really high-level karate guys, just like in the ATA and just like with other Taekwondo organizations, they got really good snap in their moves. So... Look at that type of stuff, you guys. Find somebody that you want to have a form like theirs and start training like if you were going to do their form, if that makes sense. Because that will help you get better, and by the time you get there, you'll have your own form that will be really, really good. So let's go ahead and do the second half just one time for you guys. If you have any questions over anything, go ahead and comment them while I'm doing it, and we'll answer right after that. Let me make sure I've got the right side of it. Left leg in front. Left leg, gotcha. So did we get any questions in? No, sir. Cool. Thanks, you guys, for watching. If you got any questions that you would like to give us, you could shoot us a private message on Facebook, or you could post it if you want somebody else to see it. Because I know if one of you guys has a question, usually somebody else does too. <laughs> hmm? Go for it. <laughs> Basically said, make sure y'all stretch because third degree form is very hard if you are not flexible, Mr. Savinman. Make sure y'all stretching at home, okay? And yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being here, you guys. Hopefully you got something good.